Welcome to Yukanic. Today on Yukanic, we have a 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan. On this Dodge Grand Caravan, going to go over the process to be able to replace the coils and or ignition coils. There's one per cylinder, as well as your spark plugs. If you're replacing the ignition coils, the, the only step that you're doing different is you're just not replacing the spark plugs. But to get the ignition coils and to the spark plugs, you got to go through the same process. This is a 3.6 liter Pentastar motor. Um, so if you have a 3.6 liter Pentastar, um, they ran this, they run this in a lot of the Dodge Chrysler um, vehicles. This is the Caravan, um, your Journey, uh, Durango. Um, a lot of them, they'll run the same exact motor. Just might be in a different, a few things might be added on the, in the engine bay. So to start with, um, we would have raised the hood. We get to the cover here. Um, anything that I like do inside the engine, I disconnect the negative battery cable just to make sure that nothing is going to happen. Um, so we do need to pop off this cover. And this is just held on by little rubber grommets that we pop off. Once you get to there, then we have this to remove. And to get to this to remove, there's a series of some bolts right here that hold the intake plenum on. And so then when you're going to replace it or ever remove it, you'll want to have the um, individual uh, there's uh, gaskets that you need for inside there. All right, so the cover has been popped off. So now um, we have this vacuum line that goes from the side of the engine over there. Just go ahead and pull this out. And then pulled it out of this side. You can either pull it, set it to the side, or I want to... Just remove the whole thing to get it out of her way. Okay, so we've got the vacuum, this one vacuum line removed. Set that aside. Um, there's a various amount of vacuum lines and things that will be removed. Um, electrical connectors so that we can get this all um, out of the way to be able to remove it. And so forth. Um, we've got two uh, bolts here, one on this side, one on this side of the clamp. Um, loosen those so that you can remove this big air intake pipe. We got one electrical connector. Just press that together, pull it out. Same with this one that goes into the um, throttle body. That one's got the safety red clip that you press back and then be able to squeeze and open it up. So then push that back, pop this clip off. We have another clip there. Also this vacuum line here. And so you can either depress that out or you just cut that um, zip tie. And if you cut the zip tie, what you'll be able to do is just put a new zip tie back in there and you don't wear out your um, little attachment there. We have a uh, push clip that was right down in here. So remove that. That way we have it's free a little bit. And there we have the little rubber grommets on the back holding the, the two back portions in. And this housing goes into the throttle body. So with that removed, you can actually do the back three coils as well as the, the back three spark plugs if you're replacing um, those. But to get to these, we need to remove the whole intake plenum. All right, so we have uh, all the vacuum lines unhooked from here. We have a vacuum line here, vacuum line in here, vacuum line there. We have the connection that goes to your air box and then some electrical connectors that were all undone. We have this one here for the, uh, pulls uh, the radiator line up. Just pop the clip backward. and be able to open that, then we can set that aside. Or you can pull just this whole um, clip out. Oh, maybe that. 
And now we have um, nuts, two nuts on the front, two nuts here on the back to undo, and then the bolts that hold the plenum on in the middle. All right, so up front here, we have uh, two um, nuts and or the studs. I'm gonna remove it by just removing the studs because if you remove the studs, you're able to um, lift it off without having to undo anything else. If you remove just the nuts, then you still have the studs sticking out here and it will catch and get in your way for when you need to raise it up. Um, it is a E5, uh, so the E Torx 5 to get onto the stud there. You need to have it in the loosening direction, which is uh, counterclockwise. All right, so I thought I was going to try to remove it the stud wise. Stud didn't want to come out. So we'll go back to um, removing the nut. And that is a um, 10 millimeter. All right. Well, it didn't want to be consistent, so this side the nut came, or the stud came out, and not the nut coming off. So, and we'll figure that one out. So we've got the two in the back. We're going to work on that. So we have these two right here. Um, these are hopefully going to come out fairly easy. So the nuts came off easy. I'm hoping that the studs come out easy enough. And then that way, we can just basically pick this thing almost straight up and be able to remove it without, you know, finding the, the bolts that actually hold this bracket on, um, this metal bracket. We're going to see if we can do it without having to worry about that. All right, so change course. Um, just so you know, and don't worry about ever trying to take the studs out. Just take your four nuts off and they have plenty of them. You've got one bolt right down here. That is a size 13. Put your deep socket on it. Um, undo the electric connectors that are connecting into this metal plate right here. And then be able to just remove this bolt nut. And then that will be able to remove this whole bracket on the back. And make it be able that we can get this whole um, plenty of them out of the way. Because um, trying to remove the uh, the studs, what happens, there's a washer on the back there that presses against the bracket here, and so it really doesn't help you out. And so here's your uh, nut slash stud, actually a bolt, it is all one full unit. Remove that, then this little bracket will be able to just set off the side there. Like I said, there is a bunch of these wires, so just um, press through in here. But that way, that's out of the way, so that we can remove this intake plenilum with no problem. Right. So we've got all the uh, electrical, all the vacuum lines disconnected. Uh, now we want to remove this um, intake plenilum, and this is to be able to gain access to the top of the motor for replacing the front three ignition coils as well as the spark plug. The back three you can remove and replace as long as you remove this um, hosing mechanism that goes over here to your air box. Um, but we would prefer to replace all of them at the same time unless you're only worried about cylinders one, three, and um, five. So now um, the last thing that's holding these on is a series of uh, six bolts, maybe seven that are right here, 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 and down in here. And those are eight millimeters, or you can use a 20 um, T Torx. Um, they have both options to be able to loosen and remove. And these should not be very tight. Uh, it's only uh, seven to nine um, Newton meters is what they should be tightened to. So shouldn't have a huge issue getting them out, but that's not always true. A double look in there it may just be one more right here so seven um, looks like seven total
So there's a total of seven bolts, those seven bolts undone. Now we should be able to pick it up and be that we have our two studs still here on the front side. Um, we want to pick it up and move it to the back to be able to get it to come undone. So that is the removal of our intake plenilum to be able to gain access to the spark plugs to replace those. We have our back three and our front three. I'm um, going to get some rag um, to put over here to make sure that we don't have anything fall in there while we are doing work on the, uh, the spark plug um, portion of itself. Put that aside. Now, um, in the previous, we did put some paper towel down in the uh, um, intake tubes so that we don't drop anything down in there. Now, if you're replacing all your ignition coils and all your spark plugs, then the process is just repeated the five times. And just note that if you were replacing just one uh, ignition coil because you're getting a faulty um, uh, coil uh, due to your um, engine code is coming on and it's telling you which cylinder happens to have a misfire, you can start by replacing the spark plug and or the ignition coil in that um, cylinder and see if it comes back on. If it comes back on, then you've got something more going on that is most likely more internal with the head itself. And so you would have to be doing some uh, further work on there. But um, the order uh, cylinder numbers on this goes one, three, and five, and then two, four, and six. Evens on the front, odds on the back, bank one and bank two. All right. So um, that being said, we've got the intake plenilum off. And now we just go ahead and remove this heat shield, get it away out of there. And then, you know, we want to do our best to mitigate the amount of dust that could potentially fall down into the cylinder um, heads themselves. So we have these clips. You just need to kind of depress down, or I mean, pull them back. So if you use a, a screwdriver, you kind of pull them back. And as you pull back, it pulls up the front of the, uh, the clip. There we go. So press it in toward the coil, press it back. You'll hear it uh, kind of click, and then you can pull and undo that. And as for the front three, and then we have a size 10 millimeter bolt there on the front to be able to remove. Just uh, remove the ignition coils and pull them all out. Now, if you were just doing the ignition coils, then you would put um, your new ones in right now, or not right now, you would just put your new ones in, not worry about the spark plugs. This uh, vehicle has 190, so we are doing the spark plugs uh, on it. Now, um, put some dielectric grease in here as you put it back in and reinstall. So, we just repeat this process for all the cylinders and pull them out, the ignition coil. So, we're working on the front three right now. So, then next, You'll need either a 5 8 or a 16, um, and it's got to be a fairly thin wall to be able to get down in these um, uh, spark plug tubes to be able to get them to come in. All right, so um, now we're just going to go in the loosening direction, which is your um, counterclockwise or anti-clockwise to be able to remove on um, your spark plugs. And as you remove them, you're going to want to inspect your individual spark plugs to see how well they look, if you're getting a good burn on all of them, and that they are hopefully burning at an even um, burn. And that, um, that is a good worn spark plug. Definitely got the mileage out of this one. The same here, definitely got mileage out of it. And it looks fairly similar to the other one. So uh, the first two being cylinder um, two and four are having an equal burn on it. So that's pretty good to see. As well as that, this one has a little bit of wet, but um, nothing bad. All right, so we remove the front three. You repeat the process for the back three. 
um, spark plugs and, and we'll do that also. Um, we're ready, we can install the front free spark plugs with our new spark plugs. You can see we have our new spark plugs um, and these are definitely going to give a better run for this vehicle. Now we'll take them, we have the spark plug socket here. If you don't, you'll want to use just a, a rubber hose to be able to put on here. Either way you use it, you don't want to just drop that spark plug in there. And so these spark plug sockets do come in handy to be able to hold that. And then that way it will align into the hole and then we can drop it in and be able to um, bring it hand tight. And then we uh, torque them to spec, which is a 13 foot pound on this vehicle on each spark plug. All right, so I've got uh, the three front spark plugs have been um, installed hand tight. And now we should be able to put our torque wrench on there and torque it to spec, which was 13 foot pounds. Use it enough, it crushes that crush washer and gives us the good seal that we need. So we have the front three in and um, now we can put the ignition coil and again our ignition coils per cylinder and then you would repeat this process on the back. The front ones are definitely more labor intensive for the fact that you need to take the intake plenum off to be able to do that process. We're gonna add a little bit of dielectric grease in here to give us better connection with the electrodes there to provide us the most optimal sparking capabilities. We've got all our connections made there. We gotta put the uh, three number 10 millimeter bolts in. To hold the ignition coils down, you just hold them in place so that they don't um, disconnect. So it's literally just snug. And so that would be the replacement of that's the front ignition coils being two, four, and six. Repeat that process on the back three, and then we'll go over the process to be able to replace your intake plenum um, when you replaced all of those spark plugs. So after you replace the spark plugs on um, the front and the back, the back can be replaced without taking off the intake plenum, but to get the front ones replaced as well as your ignition coils, you will need to remove that intake plenum. So um, the last thing we'll need to do before we're ready to put the intake plenum on is to replace these uh, rubber gaskets and then we'll be ready to put that on. So we still have some uh, paper towels down in there so that we don't drop anything down into the intake itself um, because that would be bad. So we'll just remove these and put in the new ones and then be able to install our intake back on. There we go. So we have them installed in place. And so we want to make sure that we remove our, our paper towels that we put in there. We keep debris from falling in while we did any work on the top. And now we can put the intake funnel in on and be tightening it down. This portion of the heat shield you can put back on if you have or toss it. So then we have our plenum and we want to make sure we have our two studs on the front of the plenum that we want to line up into the bracket and then be able to get that situated over it 
and we have seven bolts that hold this plenum down. They are size 8 millimeter or a T25. Um, you only tighten these to a 7 uh, to 9 newton meters. So basically snug to hold that down. And as you tighten it down, you want to do kind of a crisscross pattern to get that everything lined up and just to kind of get it all snug down evenly. Get those all uh, tight and snug down, um, just so that everything is uh, pressed down, tightened here. And now we can go ahead, put on our two nuts on the front here. Um, those are the 10 millimeter nuts. Um, go ahead and reinstall those and tighten them up. And then we have two nuts on the back. This bracket they put back into place this corresponding 13 millimeter nut and bolt that goes down here at the bottom of the bracket right down in here and that bolts into the head itself and then it's just a matter of getting all of your uh, vacuum lines hooked back on, electrical connectors ran back in, and that would be the replacement of your intake plenum. Um, if for needs of taking it off to do your spark plugs, ignition coils, or anything of the sort. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Eucanic, where you can be the mechanic.